Welcome to another video. Let us start with a claim that you can live forever. And we're going to prove it by mathematical induction. We're just going to go through the steps you need to take in a mathematical induction and arrive at a conclusion. So let's begin. Remember, when you do mathematical induction, you want to start with the base. So the base case is that you were born. So our first proposition, so this is the claim that we have, but we need to prove that by starting with the base case, which is the case, the proposition is that on day one, you actually survived, right? You were born. So let's call that day one. Hmm. It's such that you survived. That is the base case. Did you survive day two? Obviously, we can also test that, actually, just to add to the flavor. So, we say that P, the proposition for day two, is that you survived. These two statements are true. So, what then do we do? After we have tested two days, we can keep testing, but at some point, we're just gonna stop and go, you know what, I'm just gonna pick a day in the future, okay? So, let's assume it is true for any day K where you survive, okay? So you wake up on a day, we go, assume it is true for day K. Now, do we know what day K is? We don't know, but we're gonna assume it is true. So P of day K is such that you survive. We just need to show that you will survive day K plus one. Okay, so one, to show that you will survive K plus one. This is all we need to show. So we're going to say, so for day K plus one, the proposition for K plus one is such that you survive day K plus one. Okay, there is no function. Ah, we're just gonna claim it. Let's assume it's a linear function, one day at a time, okay? So let's assume that you survive day K plus one. Is this a true statement? Is this true? What if it is you survive day K plus you survive day one? Well, you actually did survive day one. So if you survive day K, you should survive the next day, right? That's the meaning. If you survive today, you'll show up the next day. Okay, with a question mark. I'm going to put the question mark at the beginning. You survive day K. And we're going to make it the plus day and you survive day one. We're gonna make this claim, assuming it's just the number one. I can't even write it. And <laughs> you survive day one. So the point is, really, if you survive day K, we can put this claim here, and then you're gonna survive the day after it, one more day. Well, it doesn't make any sense. Because the problem with this claim is that we are assuming 
it is true for day K. What makes you think it is true? We cannot make assumptions about things like this because they're not mathematical. Okay? So, the problem with this is just that. This assumption is illogical. That you survive day one does not mean you will survive day two. So, it might be scientific, it might be religious, it might be emotional, but it's not mathematical. So, it is impossible to prove by mathematical induction that you can live forever. Because if we can prove that you surviving today guarantees that you survive tomorrow, then everybody lives forever. But nobody lives forever. Living forever is not guaranteed, not available even. But there's something that is guaranteed. If you pick an odd number and you square the number and you subtract one from your answer, the final result must be divisible by eight. And I think that's the one you should be interested in. Let's get into the video. Let's show that if you get an odd number and you square the odd number and you subtract one, whatever answer you get is divisible by eight. And um, I'm not gonna use um, proof by mathematical induction. I am just going to use number theory understanding and I think you can learn one or two things if it is strange to you and if you're already in the game you already know where I'm going with this. So the first thing we're going to do is recall or understand how numbers are represented. Now as far as this kind of property about divisibility we're talking about integers because if you say a number is divisible by 8 it means when you divide the two numbers you're going to get an integer you're not going to get a fraction. Okay so here how do you represent odd numbers generally well an odd number is represented as 2n plus 1 or 2 whatever 2k plus 1 so we can say that since a oh this is the proof okay since a is odd we can say a is equal to let's say a equals 2k plus 1 why do we choose this representation? Because adding one to the, twice a number makes it odd automatically. Okay, so whether the original number was already even or odd, if you multiply any number by two and add one to it, you have generated an odd number. Even if this is zero, two times zero plus one gives you one. If this was minus one, two times minus one plus one gives you minus one. So you can create every integer that exist by this. Sometimes some people use minus one if you're dealing with the k's being natural numbers, but let's just look at this. So here, a must be 2k plus one, which is the general representation of odd numbers. Okay, so now that we have a representation for it, what will a squared be? Observe that a squared will be equal to 2k plus one squared. And what would that be? If we square this out, it's going to be 4k squared plus 4k plus 1. So that means that a squared plus 1, sorry, a squared minus 1, that's where we're going. a squared minus 1 will be equal to 4k squared plus 4k plus 1 minus 1. Hey, come on. So this is what a squared minus 1 is going to be. This is our a squared, and we're going to subtract 1 from it. What do we get? We're going to get 4k squared plus 4k, and we're done. So the claim is that this number is divisible by 8, whatever k is. Well, we really don't need to know what k is. Okay, we just need to ask ourselves, is k an even number? Because whatever, this is an integer. Oh, I should have said that from the beginning. With k, k is in the set of integers, okay? It doesn't matter if it's a positive integer or a negative integer. So, if k is an integer, it is either even or odd. And even if you claim it is zero, well, if it is zero, zero is divisible by eight. 
Okay, so it doesn't matter what it is. If you pick zero, just to confuse everybody, well, zero, zero plus zero will be zero and it's divisible by eight. But just to avoid that, because as a trivial case, assuming K is an even number, just look closely. Okay, let's rewrite this. Let's factor out four. So this is gonna be four times K squared plus K. Now look. If k is an even number, it means the square of this number is going to be even because the square of an, e an even number times an even number is always even. So you have even number plus even number. That gives you another even number, right? So if k is even, then k squared is even, right? And then, which implies that k squared plus k is even. The sum of two even numbers is always even. So it's even plus even equals even. So that means the number in this parenthesis is an even number, and we can represent, which implies 4 times k squared plus k since this is an even number, we can represent it as 2t, where t is any integer, okay, which is equal to 4 times 2t, okay, um, we know t is an integer, let's put it that way. So, what is this? This is 8t, and 8t is obviously divisible by 8, okay, which is equal to 8t and it's divisible by 8. As long as you can write it as a multiple of 8, it is divisible by 8. Now, the second option is if k is odd. If k is odd, then, watch this again. The square of an odd number is odd. The sum of two odd numbers is even. Odd plus odd is even, right? Okay, so if k is odd, then k squared is odd, and k squared plus k is even. And we're back to where we started again. And so, 4 into k squared plus k will be equal to 4 times 2t again, where t is an integer, which implies which is equal to 8t. So, no matter how you look at it, the square of an odd number minus 1 is always divisible by 8. So, how do we conclude this? We can say, therefore, a squared minus 1 is divisible by 8 for all odd numbers. For all odd a. Okay, there we go. This is not by mathematical induction, although I could have used it, but I think this one brings a different perspective to how numbers behave. See you in the next video. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.